Okay, good morning everybody. My name is Pradeep Nidram. A very warm welcome to the webinar today. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, top 10 productivity enhancers every SOLIDWORKS user should be aware of. A uh, couple of uh, housekeeping rules before we start off. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any uh, technical problems uh, related to the audio or the video, please let us know. Use the chat window or the questions window that you have on your screens and uh, we should be able to take care of that. And uh, the content I have for today is uh, about 45-50 minutes. I have chosen 10 topics. Uh, so if I will be able to spend 5 minutes on each topic, it will uh, make a 50 minute webinar and in the last 10 minutes we can open up for Q&A. Um, the reason why we picked this topic is we wanted to deviate slightly from the uh, uh, usual uh, tips and tricks that we do. Uh, when we do tips and tricks, a lot of users uh, come up and tell us that they have picked up quite a lot. Um, but again, the retention or you know the uh, ones that they put into practice are the ones which are uh, you know um, we wanted to focus on. So what I would be doing today is I'll take you through ten different topics um, uh, that every solid user should be uh, leveraging to speed up their process. And the reason why we call this productivity enhancers is these are uh, topics or these are functionalities which uh, uh, improve your speed, improve your uh, efficiencies. Basically, uh, you, may, you know something as simple as uh, mouse gestures or you know something as simple as uh, let's say design tables. You know, it reduces a lot of your effort and time. Eventually, uh, time saving is uh, good for everybody. So. Without further delay, let's jump into it. So I have 10 topics as I said, you know, let's start with uh, uh, something very, very interesting which is called uh, smart features or uh, design library. I don't know how many of you use it. Um, a lot of power users or a lot of experienced users who have three or two years of experience, I see them using a little bit but not much. But let me show you how it works and let me show you uh, why you should be using it rather. And again, as I said, you know, I just have five minutes for or so for each topic. So I won't be able to cover a great depth into it. Uh, but the idea is to, you know, just to kindle your uh, imagination or curiosity so that, you know, you can, uh, you can, you can be aware of this functionality and you can uh, be aware of the value that brings in that it brings in so that you know you can always uh, uh, learn it on your own there are a bunch of YouTube uh, videos and SOLIDWORKS tutorials and we are always there to help you out so uh, let's start design library um, or smart features as I like to call it so design library is where I store uh, frequently used parts and features and blocks uh, for diagrams nodes for uh, drawings etc so this is this saves a whole lot of time, especially if you are doing the similar work day in and day out. So let me show you how it works. So here I have a, a simple part on my screen. And uh, let's say I'm trying to add a feature or a, a small feature like an undercut. The one you see on your screen, I have an undercut here. So this I'm trying to add this particular feature. So one way of doing it would be to uh, do it in SOLIDWORKS from scratch, um, you create a reference plane or maybe you use one of the existing planes, you create a sketch and you do a revolve cut. So this is the four or five different steps. But if this particular feature is something that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, what I would like to do is I'd like to save it as a feature in my design library. Uh, I hope everybody knows how to locate design library. If you don't see this particular folder on your screen, um, you can map it in your options. So in your design library, you have a bunch of annotations, features, uh, forming tools, and smart components shipped in uh, out of the box uh, installation of SOLIDWORKS. Apart from that, you can add further more libraries as in when needed. Uh, like I have a library here which has a shaft and a feature. So let's say if this is a feature that I use on a day in day basis, what I can do is I can save it in my library and uh, the extension is .sldlfp. So at the time when I need it, I can just drag and drop it and use it. So you can see as soon as I drag and drop it, SOLIDWORKS will give me a preview. It's uh, prompting me or it's giving me an indication of what to click or where to 
click so I have chosen the face now all I have to do is I will give it a reference edge so once I click the reference edge my shaft undercut would be ready and uh, best part is you can even make it parametric so let's say from 6 mm you can get it down to 4 mm and you'll be done so you can see a uh, lot of time can be saved uh, by using such a feature by or by storing such a feature in design library so uh, let me show you how we can create it I'll pick a simpler uh, model just to give you a, a feel of it so I'll open a new part I'll uh, just start with a regular block let me add some material to it and uh, let's say I'm trying to save or I'm trying to create a feature a uh, simple slot that I use on a day-to-day -day basis I'll just quickly create it quickly dimension it let's say I want to locate it from the edges and let's give it a value of 25 one more dimension will fully constrain this okay so now I want to just make it a simple cut let's say 2 mm and let's take it one step ahead and let's create one more circular cut inside this and let's make it a 1 mm cut so now I am interested in saving these two features uh, both the cut extrudes so what I can do is I can just open my design library pin it and then drag and drop these two particular features into my design library window so as soon as I do it SolidWorks will launch a feature manager window where it says add to library and I can give it a file name and I can choose which design library folder I want to save it into and further I can give it a description but for now I'll just quickly say save okay so here I have my uh, feature saved so now let's test it out let's see how it works so again I'll just quickly open up component let's add some material to it and now let's test out our newly created uh, design library feature so uh, the way you use it it's really simple you can just drag and drop it onto different faces you can see that it's trying to uh, adjust itself depending on the face so as soon as I drag and drop it SolidWorks is giving me a preview it's asking me to select the edge it's highlighting the edge so I can select any two edges which will serve as a reference and I can quickly say ok so I can see the um, process is pretty simple it's not very complicated and uh, you can definitely save a lot of time so I hope uh, you liked it, the design library feature you can uh, save uh, notes uh, this is one area where you can save a lot of time if you use notes on a, uh, on a frequent basis in your drawings what you can do is you can save all the notes as a SLD LFP uh, sorry, in your design library and then you can keep using it I also save um, frequently used parts and SolidWorks itself uh, is shipped with a bunch of uh, interesting design library features so you can see uh, let me just show you uh, we have fluid power ports we have o-ring grooves retaining ring grooves I have a, a fluid power port SAE J1926 
So I can just drag and drop it and here you have access to configurations as well. So you can pick the configuration and quickly locate it. And as soon as you accept, even you can um, um, locate the dimensions from the feature manager window. And you can also override the dimensions, any dimensions like uh, the diameter, etc. You can override it. And there's a lot of information here. You see the, how complex this particular um, um, uh, fluid port is. So the sketch is quite complex and you have saved a lot of time just by dragging and dropping and using it. So if this is something that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, I highly recommend to start using design library, saving your features in your design library apart from your nodes and apart from your frequently used components. So that's the first uh, productivity enhancer using design library and saving your features in them. The next uh, topic I would like to talk about is um, smart mates or mate references. Um, I mean I get this a lot when we uh, when we do our uh, launch events or when we are presenting SolidWorks. At times I have people come up and ask me, uh, hey how did you do this uh, when you um, dragged and dropped the component it automatically uh, mated it itself. So how, how are you able to do it? So um, the answer is pretty simple. It's something called as mate references. Um, again this is something which you would be interested in looking at if you do it on a regular basis. Let's say I use this particular component in my assemblies a lot and uh, let's say I'm trying to uh, uh, add some components to this assembly. So what I would do is I would uh, store again the frequently used parts and I would drag and drop them as and when needed. So as soon as I do it, you can see that SolidWorks automatically picks up the mate. So it has not given you any prompt about the mating window or it, you didn't have to uh, uh, manually go and do it using the mate command. So as soon as you drag and drop it, it automatically uh, figures out the mate. How does it do it? I'll show you how. So you open this newly, uh, the part that we dragged and dropped into this link component. So here we have something called as mate references. So in this mate references, we have selected this edge. You can give up to three uh, reference entities, primary, secondary, and tertiary. And you can uh, pick any edge, face, or any geometric entities like vertices, etc. And SolidWorks will automatically or intelligently tries to uh, mate it appropriately. So here it's a circular edge. So as soon as I dragged and dropped it, it picked up a corresponding circular edge on the um, uh, mating component of the assembly and it also uh, picked up a, a coincident mate because of the uh, because it's an edge so if i go back to the original uh, assembly and if i look at the mate you can see there are two mates one is a concentric mate and uh, the second is the coincident mate so since uh, we picked uh, or the mate reference was uh, referring to edge there were two mates added if it was a circular face then it would have added a con concentric mate and nothing else. So depending on how and uh, how you want to do it, you can quickly create those mates. I will show you uh, how to do it, but again, as I said, we are on a tight timeline, so I'll quickly show you how to do it. May not be the as fancy as the component that you see on screen, but still, nevertheless, I'll show you the concept. Okay, I'm creating a component like this, and uh, quickly extrude it. So now uh, let's go about or let's see how we can create that uh, particular mate reference. So um, you can locate the mate reference uh, either from the command search or you have it in your reference geometry. So pick any so edge or any feature that you are interested in. In this case I picked the edge so as soon as you do it, you have your uh, uh, mate references folder located. So what you can do is you can, can quickly save this. I think I should be saving it before I use it. So give it a name, save it, and then try to mate it. 
So what I'll try to do now is try to bring it in. So as soon as I bought it in, SolidWorks has added or it has picked up that circular edge as well as um, uh, uh, two mates, basically one concentric and one coincident like what we saw in the other part. It's just that I did not uh, dimension it. So you get the picture, you get the uh, methodology, how to create or how to uh, store mate references in your parts while you create them so that when you're assembling, you'll save a whole lot of time. So that was the second topic, smart mates or mate references. So let's move on to the third topic. Um, Smart components. I'm not sure if uh, um, um, a lot of you are aware of this, but it's one of the fantastic features of SolidWorks. Smart components is basically uh, storing uh, information in your parts, in your components, so that when you bring them in, uh, they bring in additional information with them. It's a little bit um, uh, complicated than the first two topics that we saw, so follow me here and uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, if you can start using this, you'll pick up a lot of value from it. So let's say, so here I have one pillow block assembly um, where I have a part, let's say a bearing, which I will be using on a day-to-day -day basis again. So. I'll quickly open this assembly so that I can uh, show you what my intent is or what my uh, goal is. Okay. So on your screen you see assembly, it's a pillow block assembly where I have a bearing component, the one in the green, and I have some additional components uh, in this assembly. So this assembly is not, uh, what I created uh, so that I can make this component smart. So I'm just setting up the scene uh, so this is how you do it. So in this pillow block assembly, this bearing is what I'm interested in. This bearing component uh, is something that I'll be using on a day-to-day -day basis. So what I uh, am intending to do with SolidWorks or smart components is that I'm, as soon as I bring this component in, I want SolidWorks to uh, bring in this uh, hardware items and it also has to create this base for it. So the typical usage uh, would be I'll assemble my bearing onto a cylindrical shaft like this um, and it also has to rest on a flat surface. So what my goal is, uh, I want SolidWorks to bring in this extra hardware items or extra components with it and also create this particular feature uh, with appropriate hole, uh, holes inside. So how do we do it? Again, uh, we have a uh, command for making your component smart. You can search it out, make smart component. So all you have to do is pick the component in the first uh, uh, selection. And in the second selection, you want to select the components that you want to bring in. So in this case, I want all these components, uh, washers and uh, screws. And then there's one more item called features. So you can select the features that you would like to be associated with your smart components. Okay. So when you, as soon as you make your selections, you can you can click OK, and now your components are smart. Your bearing component is smart. Uh, you can see the icon. I'm pointing it out on the left. You can see a star or a uh, yellow. Uh, icon uh, indicating that the component is smart. So let's quickly save this and uh, let's again test it out how it works. Yeah. So now let me close this assembly and open up a new assembly which I would uh, call it as a test setup. So here I have a test setup, I uh, have a stepped shaft and a flat surface. So this is how I usually use that, uh, that particular component. So now I would like to bring that smart component in. Yep. 
Yeah. So as soon as I bring this component, I can quickly mate it using smart mates. And as soon as I mate it, um, there's nothing happening actually. But you see this star icon, so which indicates that this particular component is smart. So what I can do is I can click that star icon and uh, SolidWorks now launches the smart feature insert uh, smart, uh, feature manager window. So here it's asking me if I want to bring all these components in the uh, hardware items and also the feature. So I'm selecting uh, everything and but it's asking me for a reference. So I have to pick a reference, the face. So that's all I need to do. I, I need to pick the face and I need to accept it. So SolidWorks will bring in all the hardware items and it will also create this feature on the base plate. So a huge time saver. Uh, so if you can leverage this kind of uh, uh, productivity using smart components, nothing like it, I'm pretty sure it will save a bunch of time. So now let's move on to the next topic, smart fasteners. Um, I again, uh, this is for uh, users of SOLIDWORKS professional and above because uh, you'll be needing toolbox for this. Um, so let's see how this works. So here I have an assembly um, which is a lens mount assembly. Again, you can see that now we have a lot of uh, uh, lot of holes, standard holes that we have created on the components. This is an assembly, maybe eight or ten components are there. So you can see there's a lot of hole information. You can see on the uh, feature manager, in the assembly tree that you can see there are a lot of, uh, we have used hole wizard to create a lot of holes on these components. So now when I'm going to assemble it, I would uh, need fasteners. So the typical or the conventional way of doing it would be to go to my toolbox and uh, start locating the particular uh, hardware item that, that will exactly fit in that particular hole and then assemble it. Toolbox is still easy because it has made references, you can drag and drop it and it will automatically suggest a size but there is even a better way of doing it, it's called smart fasteners. On your assembly command manager you have the smart fasteners tab uh, button. So what you can do is with single click you can populate all the fasteners that will exactly fit the size and the shape of the hole that you have created using hole wizard. So it will take a 5-10 seconds but nothing compared to the time that you will be spending uh, when you use typical uh, uh, or traditional way of doing a toolbox. So within 5-10 seconds here we see that it has given us or it has populated the right type of fasteners for all the holes in this assembly. So the, I purposefully created many holes so that I can demonstrate and you can see there are different types of fasteners that are bought in of different sizes. We have flathead, uh, we have socket head uh, cap screws, we have pan screws, so everything is there and what if, what if you wanted to change or what if you wanted to uh, uh, change one of them. So what you can do is you can click on that particular item and then you can uh, right click on the fastener type and choose a different, uh, uh, a different profile. So instead of flat and use, let's say you wanted an oval head. So you can make that change and SOLIDWORKS will take care of of all the um, fasteners that are there in that particular series. So you can see that it has uh, changed uh, the particular type of fastener and it has not just taken off that one particular hole but all the uh, fasteners in that particular series. And uh, even better, let's say uh, for this particular uh, pan screws, For this particular series of M10 pan head screws, uh, we need some bolts and we need some washers. So what you can do is you can use or you can leverage smart fasteners to do that. So here we have two items, uh, top stack and bottom stack. So you can select the kind of um, additional hardware that you need. So I need a regular flat washer on this series on the bottom stack. 
So SolidWorks is trying to figure out the right size. So it has added the flat washers and it's giving us auto size. Uh, it's suggesting that it's M10. I'm okay with it. So the next step would be uh, to bring in, let's say, something like a bolt. So you can quickly do that. Sorry, a nut. So again, a very, very effective way if you are using standard components um, that to, from a toolbox, you don't have to do that uh, in a regular way. You can definitely save a lot of time by using smart fasteners. So uh, we are through the fourth topic, uh, smart fasteners, which basically is automating your fastening process. Um, the next uh, productivity enhancer that I would like to talk about is DriveWorks Express. This is a huge uh, uh, value add for those of you who do repetitive design work, uh, especially something um, in the order in in an in in engineer to order scenario. So let me quickly show you how it works. But this is a whole different topic in itself. Uh, but I'll give you pointers on where how to go about it. So. So let's say I have a hydraulic cylinder assembly here. And uh, let's say if I'm churning out designs on a day in and day out basis of the same component or the same assembly with uh, a lot of dimensional variation and feature variation, what I can do is I can capture all that design intent and I can uh, use DriveWorks Express. DriveWorks Express is an inbuilt design automation uh, uh, solution in every suite of SolidWorks. It can be standard, professional, or premium. Uh, using which we can capture all the design intent and we can just give me a second. I think I launched sustainability by accident. Okay, so let's see how this works, DriveWorks Express. So what I have here is already set up project where I have a user input form. So here I can select uh, parameters like the bore diameter, the stroke length in inches, and uh, the type of cleavage that I want, the pressure range and the port size. So once I do this and I click create, this master assembly that you see on the screen will be modified. Each and every component in this assembly which is affected by the user input will be opened, uh, rebuilt, uh, refreshed, and saved with a different uh, file name. And all the drawings which are associated with the components will also be opened. Uh, the new values passed on and it will be refreshed, rebuilt. The views will be again um, scaled and centered properly. So a whole lot of time can be saved if you are doing your designs uh, repetitively and you know in a, in, a, in a very manual way what you can do is you can automate using DriveWorks Express so this is still a small relatively smaller uh, assembly smaller project I would say uh, using DriveWorks Express you can do fantastic stuff And even the assembly bill of materials, the assembly uh, uh, drawing will be updated. So here we are still going through the part drawings and part com uh, part level components. So the master assembly will be refreshed. All the unnecessary components will be removed. And you'll be left with the final assembly, the daughter assembly as, uh, as we call it. And even the bill of materials will be refreshed and saved. So here we have the new assembly. So this was the original assembly that we started off with, hydraulic cylinder dot SLDSM. And this is the new uh, assembly that we are uh, we have got after passing on all the values. So 
it's pretty simple it's not very complex the best part is it's not uh, it's programming less automation so uh, it's as easy to use and as simple as SOLIDWORKS itself DriveWorks uh, shares that SOLIDWORKS DNA of being easy to use and easy to learn so you can definitely uh, try to learn yourself it's very easy uh, you have some fantastic tutorials so all you have to do is go into your help uh, a menu, uh, locate your tutorials and we have some DriveWorks Express tutorials. It just takes 30 minutes to get through one tutorial that you, that is included but I'm pretty sure it will give you a sense of how easy it is to use and uh, automate your designs. So that was my fifth uh, productivity enhancer. So let's move on to the sixth one. Um, this is again one of my favorites, uh, mouse gestures. I'm, I am pretty sure I talk about it all the time uh, whenever we do any user group you know, events or any uh, tips and tricks webinar. So let me show you how it works. You would have seen me using it in this presentation itself. Many a time when I wanted to launch a command, I would typically uh, not go into, a, uh, into the command manager or maybe even uh, use the shortcut keybar. A lot of people use shortcut keybar. This is more or less similar it is one step ahead it's called mouse gestures how do you launch it uh, you have to do a right click drag as a single continuous movement and uh, you'll get a, a menu a contextual menu which um, which uh, varies from um, different environments like right now I'm in a art environment so it's different so but as soon as I get into a let's say a sketching environment it becomes different so these are all my sketch mouse gestures here I have a smart dimension tool, I have a circle, I have a line, I have a slot, I have a power trim. So if I want to launch a particular command, I can go into my S key and launch it from there. But this is even better, this is even faster. So let me just show you how it works. So I'm just creating a sketch and you can see how quickly we can create the sketches and dimension it. Of course, um, um, it, it comes with some, um, initially I think you'll, you might have to uh, practice it a little bit, but once you do it, I'm pretty sure you know it will be worth it. So here we are done with our sketch, get out of the sketch and uh, add some material to it and I'll show you how uh, it varies from different modes like right now we are we have come out of the sketch mode and um, let me show you how it works in part mode so now we are in part mode so let's say I want to add fillets now I can keep my fillet command shampoo command whole wizard and even uh, the views on my gestures so that it's really super fast so here I'm trying to launch my uh, fillet command So it's a super fast way of uh, modeling. I'm pretty sure it's uh, a huge time saver. For those of you who are using shortcut menus, you can definitely uh, see the value. And for those of you who don't use shortcut menus, not a problem. What you can do is uh, you can start uh, using them right away. And as I said, it varies from menu to menu. Uh, how do you uh, go about uh, configuring it? Go to your tools menu where you have this customize option. So tools, customize, and here you have a mouse gestures tab where you can, uh, where you have access to every single command and so it's all it works. So what you can do is you can start uh, configuring them. We have two modes. Right now I'm in a eight gesture uh, mode. What you can do is to start off with, uh, you can start with a four gesture mode maybe uh, and you can assign any command that you want. So let's say you're looking for something like power trim. Um, and you can assign it to one of your uh, gestures here I have it on my sketch mode 
Uh, let's say you, you use it in drawings also quite often. What you can do is you can assign it to your drawings to one of the directions and you can start using it. Um, initially, um, you can print the list. Uh, so here I'll show my commands uh, which I have, which I'm using currently. And I can, what I can do is I can print this list and keep it on my desk so that uh, I can use it as a reference till I get used to it. But I'm telling you, once you are used to it, you won't even think about it. It becomes almost like a reflex. So I highly recommend uh, uh, using using it. It definitely cuts down on your uh, uh, cycle times and it increases your productivity definitely. The next uh, enhancer is something called as a feature freeze. Uh, this was introduced in I think 2011 or 12, 12 uh, if I'm not wrong. So what it essentially does is it eliminates that wait time uh, for the features to rebuild. So this happens a lot for people who work with complex uh, components, complex geometries. So uh, most of the time, let me show you how it works. So here I have an assembly in which I have a component which I have, uh, which has a lot of detail in it. So whenever you open a component, whenever you open this assembly, what SolidWorks uh, tries to uh, do is it refreshes. So here I have an iPad cover which has three configurations, blank, logo, and hexastar configuration. So in this, um, you can see that we have a lot of features. So there are a lot of sweeps and a lot of split line command used and a lot of uh, uh, a lot of filleting going on, so a lot of um, kind of you know detail is there. So in such uh, components, when you're opening a component, or even when you're changing or uh, switching between different configurations, it will take some time. So here I'm going from a blank configuration to a logo configuration, where logo is just a extrude cut, but you can see that on the bottom, you can see that it is showing me that it's rebuilding all the 70 features. Essentially, all it had to do was do one uh, new feature, but instead it chose to refresh or rebuild all the features that are existing. And you can see the rebuild times also. So it took 7.5 seconds uh, to rebuild or to switch between these two configurations. And I have even more complex uh, configuration, a hexa star configuration, so which has a lot of uh, detail on it. So you can see on the bottom that it's trying to rebuild all the features for the hexastar cut. So at times it can be a little bit annoying, so you have nothing to do. You have staring at the screen, waiting for SolidWorks to uh, come back uh, with the configuration or with the part. So a um, lot of time will be wasted. And as I said, you know anything that uh, saves time is a productivity enhancer. So you can see uh, the statistics window that it took uh, 25.82 seconds uh, to rebuild uh, this particular hexastar configuration. So all we were doing was we were just switching between configurations. You know we were uh, planning to do nothing else. So in SolidWorks 2012 uh, and above, we have a new feature called feature freeze. So you can see this yellow bar. Um, it is a freeze bar. It is similar to the rollback bar that we use. Uh, this blue bar is the rollback bar uh, in the feature manager. And on the top, you'll have this yellow bar called the feature freeze bar. If you're using 2012 and above, and if you don't see this yellow bar, and if you want to use it, you can enable it by going to your options. And uh, you can enable the freeze bar options in the general uh, settings system options general and you have enable freeze bar checkbox so check it and you'll be able to see it and how do you use it you just uh, simply drag this bar and you can freeze all the uh, features which uh, which come into this uh, particular um, uh, freeze bar so what I'm telling SolidWorks or what I'm uh, asking SolidWorks to do is to freeze all those features. I have no intent to change them right now, so I'm just freezing them. So once I freeze them, and if I want to change between um, configurations, you can see that it's very uh, 
simple and easy. I should have uh, rebuilt all the configurations. So if I'm changing between configurations, it's almost uh, immediate. From blank to hexastar, you can see that it's taking uh, virtually no time. Previously, it took 25 seconds. Now, uh, the total re rebuild time with freeze is zero because essentially SolidWorks is not rebuilding any of the features. So a huge time saver for those of you who use complex parts, complex geometry, a lot of features and every time you are waiting for SolidWorks to uh, rebuild or refresh, you can maybe start using feature freeze. The next uh, topic, we'll be talking about design tables. Um, 8 and 9 are more or less similar. 8 is design tables and 9 is configurations. So I'll spend uh, I think uh, 5 minutes or maybe a little more than that on these two topics. But again, these are uh, complete uh, uh, webinar topics in themselves, uh, design tables and configurations. What I wanted you to do is to just notice uh, how much we can achieve by using these uh, functionalities. So let's start with design tables. I'm pretty sure everybody has uh, gone through design tables at a certain level, maybe in your um, essentials or uh, in your essentials training or maybe in, in, in your models you use design tables to a certain level but what uh, you can do with design tables is a lot a uh, lot more than what people can think of uh, essentially here I'm talking about um, uh, again capturing a lot of design intent and start uh, saving time so here I have an enclosure maker a sheet metal assembly um, basically a bunch of components typical enclosure that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you are doing something like this and uh, let's say you want to um, automate or you want to capture a lot of design intent, there are multiple ways to go about it. One is based on how Drivebox Express works. Uh, the second thing is uh, the design tables. So here I have four different configurations and I have a design table uh, included. It's already done, so I'm not going to create it right now from scratch because it takes a lot of time. All I have is five minutes to show you how it works. So here I have a small embedded Excel uh, inside my SolidWorks assembly, so where the user can input, uh, let's say, something like enclosure width or um, maybe the depth. Let's increase it to 20 and enclosure height. Let's make it 45. And not just the dimensions, you can also uh, include features like say, I want the hosting eyeballs, I want a floor stand, I want a deep bottom. So once I uh, give this values and once I come out of the table, by clicking in the graphics window, SolidWorks will start rebuilding, or will start refreshing the assembly for me. And with the new input, it will, uh, resize, rebuild and uh, also bring in uh, the new features that we were asking for such as the uh, hosting eyeballs and the floor stand and within a couple of seconds you see that we have an, uh, a refreshed assembly. It's, a not, it's not a new assembly, it's still the same file that we're dealing with so you have to maybe do a save as or a save as copy now, that's all the difference between Drivebox Express. Drivebox Express will save it as a different file for you so but essentially, you know, you saw uh, the value that you, you were able to capture the design intent and you were able to uh, save a lot of time. So again, a huge productivity enhancer, I would say. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, there are a lot of help in on online. Um, there are some tutorials, fantastic tutorials for design tables and uh, some uh, YouTube videos that might help you in the right direction. Or uh, we are there always to help you out. So next topic is configurations. Configurations I think is pretty basic now. Everybody is using it, but just uh, for those of you who um, are not uh, using it, I would just like to take you through this. So um, here I have a small uh, plastic component uh, uh, that has, uh, it's a speaker uh, enclosure cover. So. Um, I saw this many a time when you have variants like let's say the same uh, speaker uh, uh, casing with different uh, features and with different openings 
what people do is they usually save it as uh, different files. What I would like to do is I'd like to use configurations and save them in a single file. Um, this is again very uh, easy to use. Let me show you how. Let's say in a particular family uh, you don't need the speaker volume button, this volume control. So what I can do is right click on it, click on configure feature and it will open up a window. So here I can create configurations. So I have created six configurations and uh, on all the S type configurations I don't want this particular feature. So I'm just quickly suppressing them and uh, I need to give it a name, save the table and as soon as I do this you can see that SolidWorks has created all the six configurations and in all the slave configurations, all the S configurations, the particular volume control is disabled. So what this does is uh, it eliminates the need for saving 10 or you know, uh, in this case six different files. So instead you can save all this information in one particular file. And uh, let me show you how I have a finished component with all the configurations, with all the information captured. Let me show you how it works. So the same component um, I have added. Let me show you the table. So we have captured not just features, we have also captured some dimensions and the sketches. So when you switch between configurations, you can see this is the 100C configuration I wanted. So in 100S, the volume button won't be there. In 200C, the cuts are different. The volume control is on and off. So all this information is stored inside of one component. and and your drawings also you can make them configuration specific that's not a problem. So instead of having 10, 15 different files you can save all the information in one single file. So that was configuration uh, store, you can store variants in a single file. So the last topic, uh, I, I have nothing to demonstrate here um, but this is something personally which I think will increase productivity a lot. It's a 3D mouse. Um, as I said, you know, I don't have anything to show you, but I, what I can do is I can give you this video. Um, the video might uh, not play or, you know, uh, as smoothly as expected, but uh, I just wanted to talk about it, you know. So uh, where 3D mouse comes into picture is uh, it helps you um, handle or you know orient your components or assemblies or your designs with ease. Of course, what you see in the picture is uh, exaggeration, you know. But in reality, uh, you get a feel of um, having more control over the components. Um, you can zoom, pan, rotate at the same time. But if you are using one uh, the traditional mouse, you have to do it one step at a time. So try to think about it if you have your, uh, if, you, if anybody in your organization has a 3D mouse just borrow it and see how it feels. Uh, what I noticed is that it, it saves a lot of clicks, it saves a lot of time because here you are using two devices instead of one so uh, the bottom line is you are increasing your productivity. Your uh, One analogy that I would like to uh, take is that of a, a potato peeler. Uh, when you're peeling a potato, you typically hold your potato in your hand um, and then you start peeling it with your other hand. So in CAD, uh, with one mouse, we are essentially trying to achieve the same thing with one hand. So always two is better than one and especially um, for complex models and for complex designs, I think it's very, very useful. Um, just uh, you can buy it online, you can I think uh, uh, purchase it. Uh, it's not a heavy investment, it's just a, um, it's just another uh, good uh, uh, addition to your um, design setup. So I think that's the last topic I want to talk about. I think we are right on time, it's 11.50. And uh, with that I would like to close uh, or open up for Q&A. So if you have any questions, uh, please let us know.
Yeah, I have a question regarding the feature uh, freeze. Um, yeah, I have a question uh, that uh, does feature freeze work in standard, SolidWorks standard? The answer is yes. It is available in all uh, versions of SolidWorks, all, not all, uh, all flavors of SolidWorks standard, professional and premium. Uh, but it's available available from 2012 and above. Um, I have a question regarding configurations and 2D drawings. Uh, there is absolutely no conflict here. Uh, uh, SolidWorks always encourages using configurations, and your drawing can be uh, specifically. Uh, made for your you know configurations you can have multiple sheets and yeah, you know uh, you can you can you can do multiple drawings also um, multiple files also if you want for your drawings I have one question regarding smart fasteners smart fasteners uh, is not available in SOLIDWORKS standard uh, it is available from professional and above because it uses of uh, it makes use of something called as a toolbox which is a, a standard parts library in SOLIDWORKS I have one more question regarding smart fasteners. Can I have smart fastener for hardware uh, for individual components, not a configuration or design table? I don't think I understand the question. Um, maybe if you can uh, be a little bit elaborate, or maybe if you can give me an example. You can always contact me um, offline. Uh, what I'll do is I'll throw up my email ID. So you can contact me on this email ID, Pradeep at beacon-india.com. Okay, uh, I have one more question regarding smart fasteners. In smart fasteners, I changed one uh, fastener type and it changed all the fasteners in that series. Um, the user wants to know if it can change one instance of it. Um, not using fa smart fa uh, fasteners. I mean, smart fasteners. The the whole uh, idea of using it is that we are assuming that uh, we are we, we want to save time. Of course, if you want to do it manually, you can just delete that one particular fastener and change the type of one fastener. That should not be a problem. No, smart fasteners only works with toolbox components, so you need a toolbox for it, so you need uh, SOLIDWORKS Professional or Premium for that. I think uh, that's about it. Uh, thanks for joining, and uh, uh, I'll be I'll hang on for some more time if you have some questions. But otherwise, I think uh, it was. Uh, I think we are right on time. Uh, please stay tuned. Uh, we'll be doing more webinars in the future, and if you have any specific topics in your mind, uh, please let us know. Uh, thanks for joining. We appreciate it, and have a nice day.